In early 2018, 37-year-old Rosangela Almedos de Santos succumbed to septic shock following a lifetime of health struggles and was laid to rest and buried in her local cemetery. But what was to follow was anything but normal and would take a bewildering turn. Reports emerged of haunting cries and disturbing noises coming from her sealed tomb, prompting speculation of a deeply unsettling possibility. Could Rosangela have been mistakenly put in there while still alive? What ensued was not just a mystery, but a contentious clash between different perspectives. But what exactly happened to her? Let's talk about it. This is the harrowing death of Rosangela da Santos. In January of 2018, Rosangela was getting on with her day when she suffered two cardiac arrests. She was promptly transported to hospital, where she further suffered septic shock which unfortunately ended her life, or so they thought. It came to light that Rosangela had battled serious health struggles since she was young. It wasn't uncommon for her to experience fainting spells, and she had been taking anticonvulsant medicine since she was young anticonvulsants being used to control epileptic seizures. Rosangela was pronounced dead by the doctors, and a wake was held in which her family, including her husband, attended. They all tearfully said their goodbyes, and she was laid to rest at the cemetery in Riachando das Neves in northeast Brazil the following day. She was put into a wooden coffin and sealed into a stone tomb which sat above the ground. Heartbroken, her family left and went home, but their story was far from over. Over the next few nights, horrific screams and groans were supposedly heard coming from the graveyard. Those who lived close to the graveyard said that they could hear screams, but they chalked them down to children playing pranks, which wasn't uncommon. However, the noises did not stop. Night after night, screams and groans were heard coming from the cemetery. It took the locals 11 days to report what they were hearing, but they didn't report it to the police. Instead, someone who lived near the graveyard informed the family of what they had heard which prompted them to return to the graveyard and investigate themselves. The family, along with a flock of locals, then smashed open the tomb and opened the coffin. According to them, when they opened the coffin, they were absolutely horrified to find that she had been alive. According to witnesses, she had tried to open the lid, even the nails had been hammered in were loose. Her hands were injured, like she had been trying to get out. The coffin was in a state, and so were her hands and forehead which had injuries from where she had tried to fight her way out of the coffin. The nails on the edges of the coffin cover had been raised, and inside, there were marks of scratches and blood. One witness said, When I got there right in front of the tomb, I heard banging from inside it. I thought the kids who play around the cemetery were playing a joke on me. Then I heard her groan twice, and after those two groans, she stopped. After she was dug out of the coffin, Ana Francisco Diaz, who lived nearby, claimed that she was still warm. She stated, there were more than 500 people who came here and packed the cemetery. Everybody went to see, lots of people touched her foot and everybody saw that she was still warm. She wasn't cold. They then called an ambulance, but she was again confirmed as dead and their efforts had been for nothing. But could a woman really have been buried alive and survived for 11 days? Many believe so, but many had different conclusions. According to Rosangela's mother, her body was not in the same position as when they buried her. She was absolutely certain that she had been buried alive, but the police disagreed. They said that there was no proof at all that she had been buried alive. They claimed that the victim's mother had been having dreams for days that her daughter was alive, and probably fooled herself into thinking she was. The police clapped back at the family saying, the victim was the same way intact. Her brother said so himself. They also said the information about injuries to the hands and forehead was not true and that the groans were simply rumours. Regarding the fact that there was no decomposition on the body, they said that due to Ross Angela being on strong antibiotics during her hospitalisation and the rainy weather, this would have drastically slowed down the decomposition. The police went on to investigate her death and reached out to the hospital who were handed all the information necessary to the police. According to them, more than 20 hours had passed between the woman's death and her burial. Throughout the preparations for the funeral and the wake, there were no indications of life. The doctor said, The patient had pulmonary emphysema and was hospitalised with a serious respiratory infection. In ICU, in the last 24 hours before death, 
The woman already had a serious and irreversible condition. The patient was under a degree of over-monitoring, which would make a medical error and consequent burial of the woman alive impossible. Despite this, the hundreds of people present that day still believe Rosangela had been buried alive. Her sister said, We don't want to accuse any doctor. We don't want to cause any problems. But we witnessed that situation. There was just no way a person could be buried for 11 days and still be warm. Along with this, many witnesses at the graveyard that day said they heard banging, groaning, and more, which led them to smashing open the coffin in the first place. And then there were countless people who said she was still warm when they touched her foot. With two sides saying different things, it is impossible to know for sure whether Rosangela was buried alive, but with evidence of struggle and the noises heard, it's hard to ignore the fact that it was a major possibility. A young woman losing her life is always tragic, so may she rest in peace. As always, this is not an AI channel, I do everything myself, and if you appreciate my work, subscribe, and if you want to go that extra step to support the channel, maybe consider becoming a member. I know this video is a bit shorter than usual, but I haven't really had time to work on anything over New Year and Christmas due to being with my family, so the normal video length will return next week. As always, thank you for watching.